morning, everyone, and happy Saturday. My name is Callie, and this is another weekend of Clarinet's Cats and Coffee. Luke, what do you say to that? He says it's time to sleep. In today's video, I am going to go through a number of reasons why you may be playing flat and a few solutions to hopefully help you in your troubleshooting journey. Before we get into that, I want to say thank you, patrons and channel members, for your support of my YouTube channel. If you are not already a supporter and you want to jump on board, be sure to check out all of the cool perks that I have here on channel memberships and over on Patreon. Either one will do. I greatly appreciate the monthly membership from anyone, and it's been such a great experience for me to get to know patrons over the past four years. So thank you all and I hope to see more of you there. All right, so we're gonna jump right into troubleshooting why a person may be playing flat. The first part of this journey, I'm going to take you through some of the things that you can do on your own that may help raise your pitch and also improve your tone quality. And later on in the video, I'm going to actually tell you a few things in your equipment that you may need to change to improve the tuning and the sound of your playing as well. So we're gonna first start with the things that might actually just be your fault. So let's start with the number one most important thing, which is embouchure. Now, when you're creating a good embouchure, you want to have a little bit of flexibility, but not too much. Your embouchure will allow your reed to vibrate freely and help you get a nice, clear, big, resonant tone, okay? So building a good embouchure, bottom lip over bottom teeth, your chin flat, corners, I call these your ooh muscles, you bring your corners in and your top lip down. This chin uh, muscle, is it the chin muscle? Yeah, right here is extremely important as it keeps these muscles kind of uh, your cheeks kind of suction cupped against your teeth so if you find that when you play you're actually puffing your cheeks out it means your corners are probably not in and your chin is probably not very flat So that's the number one most important thing. Make sure your corners are tight, don't let your cheeks puff out, keep your chin flat, and engage that top lip. So a nice firm embouchure. The second big thing, this actually ties into embouchure, is your jaw pressure. Now we're often taught when we form our embouchure, maybe our teachers will say something like, okay, you know, form your embouchure, but don't clamp, don't bite. And that can lead some of us to play with kind of like a big squishy bottom lip like this and to have like almost no pressure in the jaw. So if we don't have the right kind of jaw pressure, which is gentle forward jaw pressure, not pinching upward, but forward, if we don't have that forward jaw pressure, the reed is going to vibrate flat, okay? So as you're forming your embouchure with all of these components, just make sure that the jaw is moving slightly forward. Slightly forward into the reed. Now a good point to place your jaw is actually, if you take a look at your mouthpiece and your reed, in uh, with light behind it you can't really see it here but there's a point where the mouthpiece starts to curve away from the reed and that's about halfway down here on my mouthpiece so that is a good point and that's a good point to start when it comes to jaw pressure so that forward jaw pressure should end up right there where the reed and the mouthpiece meet hopefully you follow me with that all right, the third thing also ties into embouchure, gel pressure, and that is the position of your tongue in your mouth. If our tongue is low and 
you know, we've all done it at some point. We're trying to be relaxed. We're trying to be open. We're trying to have that resonance in our sound. So we experiment. Low tone position is bad because that's going to make your tone flat and possibly even your pitch flat. And then high notes are going to be impossible and it's going to be really hard. So keep that tongue high like you're going E or SH so that the speed of the air is fast, which will keep the reed vibrating nice and fast. So when you go up to those high notes, you'll be able to reach them and stay in tune. The other thing that may creep up on you with tongue position, instead of it just being too low, some people when they play, they pull it back in their mouth. And you, it's hard to really tell if you're doing that, if you're, if you're slurring. Um, so one thing that I would recommend is to practice tonguing. And then start slurring to see if you actually fall back into your mouth. If you pull that tongue too far back, it creates this front part of your mouth, a really slow kind of um, pool of air in your mouth that's not really going anywhere. So it's going to make your reed vibrate a bit slower. All right, the next thing has to do with air support. I, I, I would say probably nine out of 10 times when somebody plays for me, the first thing that I mention is air support. And that meaning blowing a consistent column of air from start to finish in all of your phrases. Consistent column meaning if you were to just press a spray nozzle, and you were to whoosh up and down and with your dynamics, the amount of air pressure going against the reed would not change whether you're playing loud or soft, whether you start your breath or end your breath. This is where long tones can actually be very, very useful. If you don't actually know how to sustain a consistent quality column of air from start of your breath to the finish of your breath, practice doing some long tones and really listen. Make sure that your tone and your intonation, your quality of sound is the same all the way through. Then you can throw in dynamics, practice playing forte, piano, fortissimo, pianissimo, everything in between to make sure that consistency in airflow and air support is there. A lot of times we run out of air support at the very end of our breath, which is why I suggest practicing doing long tones on a full breath of air just to see what your natural tendency is as you run out of air. All right, the next few that I'm going to mention are things that are actually issues with equipment. So the first one is you're using the wrong barrel for your instrument. So if you're playing on, for example, a buffet R13, I think the standard length for an R13 is a 66 millimeter buffet barrel. A lot of barrels out on the marketplace are designed to be used with R13s because they're kind of the market leader in clarinets. Um, so if you have a different instrument, like I do, like a Yamaha, uh, you need to really test out these barrels when you're trying different brands just to make sure that it doesn't throw your tuning completely out of whack. Check your barrel, check your tuning, if you're consistently tuning too low, just try shorter barrels to see if it will help. But I don't suggest doing that until you've tried fixing all of the other issues in your playing. Fixing all of that stuff in your playing is going to actually make you a much better player in the long run. So anyway, um, say you've done all that stuff, you're playing in tune with yourself, but your instrument is still low, then it's time to check a different barrel. The next one is actually very simple and not super expensive to 
change, and that is your read. If you're consistently playing flat, try playing on a read that is a half strength harder than what you're currently on. A read that's too soft is going to sound honky, bright, buzzy, high notes are going to be very difficult, and it'll be really exceptionally difficult to hold a stable pitch without the tone wobbling and shaking. If you're playing on a reed that's too hard, the opposite will be true, where it will be very difficult to have any flexibility in sound. So don't move up to a harder strength too quickly. Just try half a strength and see if that gives you a little bit more stability and a little bit higher pitch. My next point actually has to do with the mouthpiece. So I don't actually really know much about other mouthpiece manufacturers, but I can tell you about Van Doren because I use their mouthpieces a lot. They have two different pitches in mouthpieces that you can, you can buy uh, most mouthpieces at, not all of them. One is traditional pitch, which means the mouthpiece is tuned to 442. The other is 13 series, which is tuned more toward 440. Now, that being said, I have a B40 Lyre, both traditional pitch, which is this, and 13 series. The 13 series is definitely not two cents lower than this. I would say it's probably about 10 cents lower, uh, 10 cents difference between this one. So uh, it definitely tunes to 440, but this tunes significantly higher. <clears throat> so when you are out shopping for mouthpieces, just because I'm saying there's a huge difference between 13 series and traditional pitch for me doesn't mean there's going to be that big of a difference for you. It's also going to be different from one mouthpiece, uh, one mouthpiece model to another. So what that means for you is you just have to try them out and figure out what works the best for you. So, you know, those of you out there that are really tuning low and all of your fundamentals are there, if you happen to be playing on a 13 series mouthpiece, try the traditional pitch of that same model of mouthpiece and I guarantee it will raise the pitch. My next point has to do with the regulation of your instrument. So clarinets have this wonderful thing about them that as they start to get old and as pads start to get worn in as the wood changes as it does because it's wood little things will start to happen in our playing we may get more chirps more squeaks it may be more difficult to play all kinds of other stuff but one big thing can happen and that is tuning weird tuning and i can't say for me it's one way or another um sharp or flat, I don't know, but I will say that when my instrument is in good regulation, my tuning is always much more predictable. So if you haven't had your clarinet worked on in a while, maybe go to your local repair person and make sure that all of your pads are sealing correctly. One tiny leaky pad can make all kinds of problems with tuning and response and everything. So regulation of your instrument has a lot more problems than just the tuning, but I would say that is a huge thing. So make sure that your clarinet gets some love at least once a year. All right, and the very last thing, unfortunately, is the age of your instrument. So if your instrument is old, chances are the tuning is going to be a bit out of whack. Instruments that are blown out tend to have issues with maintaining a stable tone and intonation and all kinds of other things. So if your instrument is, you know, vintage R13 from like the 1960s and you just can't get certain notes to be in tune it's probably because it's old and it's had a lot of love and 
well, at that point, you just have to decide, is it worth it to get a new instrument or would you rather try out some new barrels or a different mouthpiece, adjust your equipment to match that? Um, but that is a personal, a personal thing that only you can answer. Okay, so this was, wow, this was such a great video. I believe actually this was a question from a patron a while back and I've been meaning to get around to it. So thank you for submitting this. Um, if you guys have any other things to add, please do so. If you have any other suggestions, um, this list is pretty much all I could think of whenever I was brainstorming why a person may be playing flat, but there are lots of reasons. So anyway, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful weekend, a good week next week, and as always, happy practicing.